Struggles for world power and national interests have carved their places into history. As time has progressed, though, the instruments of war have become more and more dangerous. Gone are the days when the great military strategists like Alexander the Great or King Leonidas outsmarted their enemies. Now, with a simple push of a button, a missile can be launched from thousands of miles away and hit a target within inches. But, in the quest for dominance, weapons have been created that have effects which were much more devastating than originally intended. Whether they caused too much collateral damage or brought on death in a very inhumane way, they simply could not be allowed to be used. You'd think in war that nothing would be off the table, but you would be wrong. From biological weapons to landmines, here are five weapons that the military actually made illegal. One of the most devastating weapons ever deployed in warfare was the landmine. These were explosive devices that were concealed under or on the ground and were designed to destroy or disable a multitude of targets, ranging from soldiers to vehicles. Although it was possible for these explosives to go off by use of a detonation mechanism, they mostly exploded by way of pressure when someone stepped on or drove over it. The use of landmines has always been controversial because they are an indiscriminate weapon. Although countries deployed them with the intention of eliminating certain targets, it was hardly perfect as the vast majority of mines were never detonated. Now, years after the conflicts have ended, the undetonated mines still pepper many landscapes, posing a danger to anyone that walks by. 78 countries around the world are still contaminated with landmines. Approximately 80% of landmine casualties are civilian. Children are the most affected age group. Also, most of the deaths have occurred during times of peace. Such horrible things couldn't be allowed to continue. So, in 1997, more than 150 countries joined together and signed the Mine Ban Convention. It prohibits the production or stockpiling of landmines. There are still 32 countries who have not signed the agreement, including North Korea, Pakistan, Russia, China, and the United States. Since the invention of the atomic bomb, there have been ideas about the best ways to launch and detonate them. So, the idea of nuclear artillery was brought to fruition. It was the idea of being able to deliver and deploy nuclear weapons against enemy armies on a field as opposed to targeting entire cities. A small number of countries, the United States, France, and the Soviet Union worked on the development of these weapons and also deployed a few of them. There was a second group of countries that did not outright own the nuclear artillery devices. However, they did provide artillery units that were trained to use them. They retained control of the nuclear weapons until they were authorized for use during any crisis that may arise. These countries include most of the NATO countries, Belgium, Canada, West Germany, Greece, Italy, the Netherlands, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. Luckily, nuclear artillery such as the nuclear cannon was never actually used in battle and in 1963 was retired altogether. It wasn't until 2017 that the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons was signed by 122 countries with the goal to prohibit and ultimately ban the use of nuclear weapons on the battlefield. One of the most obvious issues with nuclear artillery is that the nuclear option should not be so easily available, and that is exactly what nuclear artillery is. It can be deployed and set up very easily and with little effort. The lack of accountability paired with such extreme results rightly makes countries weary. While devices like the nuclear cannon are interesting to learn about, let's just be happy we will likely never see one in action. World War I saw some major atrocities that occurred as a result of new weapons designed to not only take the lives of troops, but to strike fear in the opposing troops. Poisonous gases were a weapon of choice for the German army at this time. On April 22, 1915, the Germans fired more than 150 tons of lethal chlorine gas against two French colonial divisions in Ypres in Belgium. This attack stunned the Allied forces and provoked anger, but things were not quite as they seemed to be. Although the Allied forces condemned these acts as inhumane instruments of war, 
chemical warfare escalated a bit, mostly from the Allies, Britain and France. These countries revved up the production and use of phosgene and mustard gas and used them more and more. However, the concentration of these gases was not nearly as strong and resulted in very few deaths. Additionally, many of the Allied countries increased production and stocked the gases only as a means of retaliation. In 1925, the Geneva Gas Protocol was a treaty signed by most of the world's countries banning the use of chemical and biological weapons in warfare. It was drafted specifically due to the effects of chemical warfare during World War I. The protocol was built on parts of the Treaty of Versailles which ended the war. However, it did not ban the development, production, or stockpiling of these types of weapons. So, in 1993, the Chemical Weapons Convention was adopted by the United Nations. As of 2013, the only countries that had not signed it were Angola, Egypt, North Korea, and South Sudan. Cluster bombs, also known as cluster munitions, have a long history of use in military engagements stemming back to the Vietnam War. These bombs were designed to eject things like explosive bomblets, designed to kill enemy soldiers or vehicles. While it seems practical enough in its application and design, there were many flaws that caused this weapon of war to be made illegal. When these devices were in use, they came in all shapes and sizes. Some of the most common were anti-personnel cluster bombs, which used explosive fragmentation to terminate troops and destroy soft or unarmored targets. They were most famously used by the Germans in World War II during the bombing campaign on London. Mine-laying cluster bombs released submunitions that did not explode on impact. Rather, they acted as mines, exploding when troops or tanks would wander too closely. Other types included incendiary, anti-tank, chemical, and anti-electrical cluster munitions. There was no disputing the effectiveness of these types of weapons. However, the problem came with the danger to civilians. They have such a wide area of effect and leave behind many unexploded bomblets which can remain for decades after they were dropped. For example, the United States cluster bombed Laos until 1973. Yet, the unexploded munitions are still responsible for over 100 casualties per year. Along with the threat to civilians, there were also many situations where these devices would cause horrific and inhumane deaths to the victims. The incendiary bombs contained chemicals such as white phosphorus or napalm, burning anything they touched with almost no way to extinguish them. Now, cluster bombs fall under the general rules of international humanitarian law. In 2008, the Convention on Cluster Munitions Treaty was signed by 94 countries. Biological warfare, also known as germ warfare, is one of the oldest forms of warfare, dating back to antiquity, when Hittites used to send people infected with tularemia into the lands of their enemies. Nations figured out that by infecting their enemies with diseases and viruses, anything that would affect the overall health of the soldiers and civilian populations, societies would be thrown into disarray by having to reallocate resources to deal with a widespread health crisis. More recent history has seen other forms of biological warfare occur. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Native American tribes were the targets. During the siege of Fort Pitt in June of 1763, the British Army attempted to use smallpox against the Native American tribes. The 19th century reported that some divisions of the American Army would provide some tribes blankets riddled with the smallpox virus. The 20th century saw the introduction of weaponized diseases such as anthrax, brucellosis, and botulism. On April 10, 1972, 109 countries signed the Biological Weapons Convention, which was the first multilateral disarmament treaty banning the production of an entire category of weapons. Since that date, a total of 183 countries have come in to sign as well as ratify it. Although the treaty prohibits the development, production, and stockpiling of these weapons, there has been an absence of any type of compliance group to monitor the signatories. Human beings are renowned for their invention and ingenuity, but when it comes to war, human beings can show their capacity for destruction and devastation. In the quest for power, it is almost as if they forget their humanity. 
We can only hope that as our understanding of war grows, so will our compassion for those involved. Be sure to click the link on screen now to check out our video of 5 nuclear tests that were way too close. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.